बिस्मिल्लाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स असलम इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी लर्न अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ किडनी टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फंक्शनिंग ऑफ किडनी किडनी परफॉर्म्स टू इम्पॉर्टेंट फंक्शंस वन इज यूर इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड अदर इज ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ किडनी इज यूर इन्फॉर्मेशन which takes place in three steps the first step is pressure filtration second step is selective reabsorption and the last step is tubular secretion we will discuss these steps one by one in pressure filtration blood enters into the kidney through renal artery then it goes to arterioles and then to glomerulus the pressure of blood is very high so most of water salts glucose and urea is forced out of glomerular capillaries the material passes into bowman's capsule and is called glomerular filtrate this cup shaped structure is bowman's capsule and the material in it is now called glomerular filtrate in selective reabsorption 99% of glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed into the blood capillaries surrounding the renal tubule as shown in diagram it occurs through the process of osmosis active transport and diffusion some water and most of the glucose is reabsorbed in proximal convoluted tubule this part of nephron is proximal convoluted tubule here salts are reabsorbed by active transport and water follows by osmosis descending limb of loop of henle allows reabsorption of water this part of nephron is descending limb of loop of henle ascending limb of loop of henle allows reabsorption of salts now this part is distal convoluted tubule it allows the reabsorption of water into blood the arrows are showing reabsorption of these substances last step is tubular secretion most of oils creatinine and urea are secreted from blood into filtrate in renal tubule arrows in diagram are showing the secretion of these substances from the blood to the renal tubule this is done to maintain blood at a normal ph of 7.35 to 7.45 now the filtrate present in renal tubule is urine it moves to collecting ducts and then to the pelvis as shown in diagram you can see the direction of arrows is showing the movement of urine towards ureter at final stage urine is only 1% of originally filtered volume the volume of urine produced by an average adult is around 1.4 liter per day this chart is showing the composition of urine you have to learn this chart from book page number 25 it is very important from board mcq's point of view it is showing the amount of substances present in urine now the next topic is osmo regulatory function of kidney first what is osmo regulation osmo regulation is regulation of concentration of water and salts in blood and bo body fluids again what is osmo regulation it is regulation of concentration of water and salts in blood and body fluids kidney regulates the water content in blood by concentrating body fluids in case of excessive loss of water and diluting body fluids in case of excess of water 
kidney produces hypotonic urine means dilute urine in case of excess of water by filtering more water from glomerular capillaries into the bowman's capsule and reabsorbing less water on the other hand in case of shortage of water it produces hypertonic urine means concentrated urine urine in case uh, in this case it filters less water from glomerular capillaries into the bowman's capsule the whole process is under hormonal control the basic hormone is vasopressin which will be studied in detail in chapter number 12 hope you understand the topic for further information and understanding see video attached at the end of lecture students this topic is very important long question in board paper so learn it well and do practice of diagram as given in diary thank you The job of the kidneys is to filter the blood. Basically, we get dirty blood entering and clean blood leaving, and all of the waste products that are taken from that dirty blood exit as urine. Words like dirty blood and clean blood aren't particularly scientific, but it is a really convenient way to think about it. If we look at the cross section of the kidney, the outermost part is known as the cortex. The next part is the medulla. Next is the pelvis. and the artery that supplies it is known as the renal artery renal is just an adjective which describes things to do with the kidney it makes sense then that the blood vessel that leaves the kidney is known as the renal vein and the tube which exits the the kidney with all of the waste products is known as the ureter and the ureter connects to the bladder and then from the bladder materials can exit the body Inside of the kidneys we've got lots and lots and lots of these tiny tiny little structures which are known as nephrons. Inside of each kidney there might be about a million of these things. So they're really really small. Let's look closer at the first step of the nephron here. And now notice that blood which is entering which is coming from a branch of the renal artery is coming through a blood vessel which is relatively wide compared to the blood vessel which is leaving this area and that blood will eventually connect up to the renal vein in between all of this is a capillary network known as the glomerulus and what happens is because the blood vessel that enters is wider it kind of gets a little bit constricted as it's trying to leave after the glomerulus so the result is we get really high pressure inside of the glomerulus the area surrounding this is known as the bowman's capsule or the renal capsule and the high pressure forces material to move from the glomerulus into the bowman's capsule Once the materials in the Bowman's capsule it can then continue on through the tubule. But let's have a little bit of a closer look at how materials move across from the glomerulus and into the Bowman's capsule. Notice that there's lots of tiny little spaces between them. These spaces are really small meaning that red blood cells can't get through. They're too large. Similarly, other large structures like proteins are mostly too big to get through smaller structures however little molecules like urea they are small enough to get through so urea will transfer into the bowman's capsule now you might be tempted to think that this is the job done we've got rid of the toxic material that's gone into the bowman's capsule the rest of the blood can continue on as normal and re-enter circulation and the job's done unfortunately this isn't the end of the story because small things can fit through other small materials which are quite useful will also fit through and enter the nephron into the bowman's capsule things like salts glucose water these things are all going to enter now this part is known as ultrafiltration the movement of materials from the glomerulus into the bowman's capsule so in order to get the useful materials back we know there's got to be a next step so we've got these materials now moving through the tubule let's investigate what's going to happen in a section of this here we've got the blood capillary represented in red and the nephron represented in green and we can see in the nephron a lot of materials some of them are useful some of them are not so useful these materials can move from the nephron into the blood capillary via active transport notice that some of the materials have moved some of them have not in the blood capillary 
we will have glucose, salts and water being reabsorbed from the nephron. The materials that are left behind, obviously we've got urea because one of the main purposes here is to get rid of urea. But what we will also have is excess salts and excess water. Your body needs salts and it needs water, but it needs to have these things present in the correct amount. So only the excess materials are left in the nephron to eventually leave the body. Notice here that there is absolutely no glucose left in the nephron. Your body works really hard to get glucose into its system and it's not going to lose any of it through the urine. It's not going to get rid of any of this stuff. Glucose may be present in urine, but it only happens if there is some sort of underlying medical condition that causes this. Now, this whole process of taking back the materials that are needed is known as selective reabsorption. Don't make the common mistake of calling it absorption, reabsorption. It's very important that you get it right. Now that you know all the processes that go on, let's have a quick look at all of the labels that need to go onto the nephron. You already know the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule, often known as the renal capsule. And next, the two tube areas are known as the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. And they are just the parts that come before and after this loop that's in the middle. And this loop is known as the loop of Henle. The loop has two parts to it. There is the descending limb and the ascending limb. The descending limb being the part where the material falls down and the ascending limb where it rises up. Next is the collecting duct and this is where all of the material from the tubule is going to enter. From there it will go down until it eventually exits the kidney through the ureter and it can then exit the body. I'm sure by now you've come to realise that the kidney function is actually quite complicated. So let's try and represent it in a slightly different format and see if we can clarify all of the different steps. So dirty blood comes in and then via the glomerulus the materials get separated. We get filtrate which contains the waste material but unfortunately also contains lots of useful material and that goes into the tubule. This gets separated from the blood, but it's incomplete blood right now because there's still lots of useful material like glucose and amino acids and things like that, which are absent from the blood vessel. Through a process of selective reabsorption, material that is useful will be transferred back into the blood. And we've now got clean blood, which is complete. It's got all of the useful things. And this leaves behind in the tubule only the waste material. And that's the the urea, as well as salts that are in excess of requirements, water that's in excess of requirements, etc. This material is then going to leave the body. It's going to go to the bladder. The material is now known as urine. And from there, it can exit the body and go into the toilet. Obviously, now the blood, which is useful, will go out of the kidneys via the renal vein, and it will go back into the circulation.